Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about butts, bums, tuchuses, badunk dunk junk in the trunk. <laughs> in my house we call it the botocal region, bumpuses, all kinds of words <laughs> that you can use for your rear end. Specifically, today I'm going to make an 18th century bum. I have this little lady here and she has a flat butt as do I. So I need a little split rump to go on her and me to give me that 18th century split rump silhouette that I adore and I love. However, I would also like to just take a minute to talk about padding in general. When we look at historical silhouettes, it's kind of like people today don't always have whatever the fashionable silhouette is. And while today's fashionable silhouette is to get as small as humanly possible, in the past, it was more about where your curves were and how they went. And if you can't make yourself smaller, you can certainly make your curves bigger. And in the past, they really didn't have a problem doing that. So they padded stuff out all the time. We talk about this constantly on this channel, but Costume in general talks about this a lot. So I want to encourage you guys, even if you think you're of larger size as I am, to consider padding. For example, there's like a little hollow right here that we all have where we like kind of dip in and then come out. You'll see in every costume I have, there's like a little crease right here. That's because that's how people normally are. If you put a little padding in here to just like stretch this distance, you'll make that crease go away. So you can pat out your hips, you can pat out your thighs, you can pat out your boobs, you can pat out your arms, you can pat out your back, you can pat out your butt, you can pat out anything on your body that's going to have clothes going over it which is absolutely fantastic and it makes it so that you don't have to fix your body you just have to fix your shape and you can do that super easily by adding padding i have made padding before in this channel i made this guy i'll link to it above and below for you this is um for i put this actually underneath a bustle to give it a little kick i've also used this independently for uh late victorian edwardian silhouettes because it gives you a little bit of hip and some butt uh, this one is stuffed with cabbage, <laughs> so it's a very firm and very thick and a little bit heavy. You can also have padding as just a roll. This you just literally tie around your waist and all it does is give your skirts a little bit of lift and gives you a little bit more hip action than you would have had previously, which is really nice. Also, when your hips are larger, your waist looks smaller. So most things in historical costuming are optical illusions. The size of you doesn't really matter, you just want the shape to be the right shape and people will automatically assume you're doing it right. Okay, so let's get to making the split bum. I'm very excited about this. I've done a little bit of research by looking at the American Duchess Guide to the 18th Century, but pretty much you can just wing this, you don't need a pattern. I'm gonna explain to you how to do it and it's a fun little project that'll give you a little bit of lift. You can make this in a smaller version, honestly, really thin version of this. Tuck it into your jeans even. Give yourself a little bit of extra romp back there. Okay, for this project I have this. Mm, it's cotton. And it's somewhere between like a drill and canvas, I guess. It's definitely like got good hands and good like it's very soft in a lot of ways. It's way softer than I thought it would be when I went to touch it. But it is still a very strong and sturdy fabric. I found a bunch of stickers, tape. Uh, those little plastic things that are like T-squares on either end, uh, staples, I found a Kermit the Frog sticker on here, and it's a little bit grubby in some locations. It also like looks like it's two different colors in some parts. It doesn't matter because this is that that's the point of this kind of fabric is like, oh, I could use this fabric. I found this at Michael Levine. It was super inexpensive, so I thought I would grab it. Yeah, you can see how grubby it is right here. So I normally would be like, you don't really need to wash this because you're never going to wash your butt. <laughs> People, wash your butt. Always wash your butt. <laughs> but this, uh, this fake butt, you don't really have to wash ever. So I was, would normally say don't worry about it. But in this case, because this fabric is crazy, I am going to go ahead and wash this. And then I will, of course, have to iron it. So enjoy your uh, ironing sequence.
Okay, let's talk a little bit about what's going to happen here. Uh, I need, I think, about two yards. That's what I have. Hopefully, hopefully that's what I need. <laughs> um, a, a bunch of tape, twill tape will do. Um, any kind of tape that you want. I might use linen, I might use twill, we'll see. Um, you're going to make one skirt piece and four pillow pieces that will turn into two pillows. That will be your rumpus. The skirt piece is sort of nebulous in all the instructions. I read like five different <laughs> like ways of doing this. Uh, they're usually between 20 and 30 inches in length. 30 seems really long to me, so I'm going to go 25. And the skirt width is essentially going to be pleated down to half of your waist measurement. My waist measurement is 40 so 35 seems okay to pleat down to 20. And that just gives it a little bit of fluff in the back. This is only a skirt in the back for you, so that's that's kind of what's gonna happen there. So I'm just gonna cut out a giant rectangle here and then pleat it onto the waist tape and hem it. The pillows are, meh, it depends on you and your size. Since uh, I am a 20 inch so back, because <laughs> I'm 40 inches, although, it's not actually true, my back is way smaller than my front. These are going to be about 5 inches at the top, which gives me a little bit of seam allowance, which will make them 10 inches minus seam allowance, about 9 inches at the very top of each buttock, and a little bit wider at the bottom, and then about 13 inches long. My goal here is to add, I kid you not, about 20 inches <laughs> to my hip measurement. My problem here is that my waist is 40 and my hips are 45. I am built a little bit like Humpty Dumpty, I am an apple. Which means that I need to add a lot extra <laughs> to my hip measurement. If you're a lot smaller than me, you're going to want to make those measurements probably just a little bit smaller than those because you still want to add some rump. <laughs> if you're a lot larger than me, you're going to want to add to obviously the width of the skirt and maybe even to the width of the pillows, but you probably don't need to add too much to the length. If you have a very particularly small frame, you might want to consider shortening those though, so it's all kind of relative to you. But pretty much everyone can make those pillows roughly the same size. It's more about how much you stuff them that adds to the, the amount of roundness that you're giving the back of your skirt. So if you make those pillows and you stuff them fuller, they're going to get shorter, obviously, because they're going to stretch out width-wise, so they're going to get fat. And I'm going to be adding quite a bit <laughs> because I need to add more to mine. If you already start out with a pretty good rump, you may not need to add a lot of stuffing to your pillows. So that's the part of this that's all com completely subjective and up to like how you want to do it. So what I'm going to do is like basically measure my hips as I'm stuffing them and try and figure out when I get to about 20 inches bigger. Speaking of, besides your material and your tape, you're also going to need some sort of stuffing. The recipes that I have seen have all called for either wool or down feathers. You can easily find wool fluff out there in the world. Get some shearling if you want. I happen to have some that I bought at an antique fair with Abby quite a while ago. Actually, almost exactly a year ago. <laughs> so I'm going to use that to stuff my chokas. But you can use down feathers. You can get an old down pillow. You can get an old down pillow from a, a thrift store and unstuff that. You can also use polyfill. You can use cotton fill. You can use any kind of batting you want. I would sort of stay away from cabbage because that seems real heavy. Like, given how my butt pad that I have for Victorian feels and how heavy it is, I don't think I would want to stuff a false rump with that. I wouldn't want something super fluffy. Also, <laughs> you want this to be fun to sit on, so I would I would try for a light and fluffy filling, but you can fill it with whatever you can find and whatever you can afford. With regard to this fabric, I would say that you just want something with a pretty tight weave, especially if you're going to do this with down feathers, um, because they will try to pop out. You might want to double line this, like you might want to put a lining inside the feather, like sort of stuff a pillow and stuff that inside this pillow if you're going to use feathers because they like to poke you in the butt. <laughs> so I would suggest that you consider that. Um, otherwise you can have it be out of any material you want. They, most people suggest cotton or linen that's pretty tight woven. Tight woven li linen is actually a little bit hard to find and kind of expensive, so. Uh, I would do it out of probably one of those or hemp. You can do it, of course, out of any fiber you want to, depending on what you can afford. The only thing that I would suggest is that maybe you might want to think about the fact that like any of the like plastic fibers are going to be pretty close to your, your rear end and you might not want to sit there during your event uh, sweating. Also silk, like you could totally do it out of a tight woven silk. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> like that'll make you sweat <laughs> so it's up to you you can do it out of any fiber you'd like they all suggest cotton or linen which is why I chose this this is a straight 
grain natural fiber situation here that I've got going. So I am just going to measure up 25 inches and rip myself a seam because that seems like the best way to get kind of a straight grain. And you can honestly just clip into the selvage when you're doing this and then rip. And then we need this to be 35 inches wide, and I believe I can do the same thing. probably be used for a pillow. So since this is cut on a straight grain I'll just want to go ahead and iron it and line it up and then I can probably get one of the pillow parts out of this. Okay I figured out if I fold my fabric like this I can actually get two pillow parts so one whole pillow out of just this little piece. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna cut one and then the other so that they're exact copies. So I'm really only gonna pattern one of them, but I'm gonna do it freehand, which is something I don't do. So just let me inform you that I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I'm first gonna do it a little bit in pencil so that I can see what's going on and then correct because I like giving myself as much of a option to correct as possible. Okay, so this is 13 inches, which is the length that we want, and this is five inches in. So I'm just gonna Pencil in a little bit of freehand here, and I'm going to bring this guy down at an angle because I think that's kind of what we want. Your rear end does the same shape, <laughs> it kind of comes out at an angle, and then we're going to give it a curve here. Ooh, I do like that. Okay. So that's a great shape. I'm going to do an ink now right over the top. These are Frixion pens. Um, I have them from Amazon in all these colors. They're in my Amazon store if you want one, or you can just go buy one if you don't want to give me affiliate money. Um, <laughs> that's totally fine. I always have an Am Amazon store linked down below with almost all the tools that I use and books and all kinds of other things in there if you guys are interested. And that you can certainly take a look anytime you want. I do get affiliate money, but it's like <laughs> tiny, tiny money. So don't feel bad if you don't want to use it. You can certainly go search Amazon on your own. Okay, so that's about what the shape looks like. That's great. I'm excited about that. <sighs> do I actually want to try and cut two of them at the same time? <laughs> uh, maybe. Should I pin it? That seems wise. Let's be, let's be wise sewers today. Again, no one is ever going to see this, but you and the people you let see your rump. So <laughs> don't worry too much about this. Like the fabric doesn't have to be cute or it can be heckin' cute. But if you plan on putting a white thing over it, I suggest you not make it too cute because <laughs> that causes problems. Um, some of my petticoats are white and that's why I'm using this boring fabric. I wanted it to not show through. Otherwise I have black, black broadcloth that I totally would have used already. Okay, so we're just gonna make a little slice. I already checked no, I can't make one out of this or else I'd be really stoked and I would tell you you could make this whole thing out of a half yard. So given that you can do this, I would say you can absolutely make this on one yard of fabric, depending of course on your size and how full you want it. So. Here are my two of my four butt bags. <laughs> and now I will make two more and we will be ready to sew. All right, so at this point we now have four of these. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and press them flat and then put them together. And I'm gonna go ahead and just sew together around the edges. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a French seam on these just around this outside edge, just because I don't like dealing with any fraying or worrying about it in any way. But honestly, this is totally overkill. You absolutely don't need to do that.
Okay, and for this one, I do actually want to go ahead and use my HP foot because I feel like I get better control and distancing on that, so I'm going to go ahead and use that one. And for that, you need your HP plate. This is my Janome M7 Continental, which I adore. This machine is amazing. And we're good to go. And my machine is prompting me to make sure that I am using, in fact, the right foot, which I am. So that's great. So I am, for those of you who don't know about French seams, I'm going to go ahead and put these right sides out, which they are. Uh, doesn't matter in this case because this is sort of neither here nor there. Um, and I'm going to go, you know, a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch from the edge all the way around. And then I'm going to trim that down, I'm going to flip it around so that the wrong sides are out, and I'm going to do another seam, which will encase this inside of it. Also, you may have noticed my weird pinning job. I did that because actually then I don't have to unpin as I go. These, this fabric sticks to, to itself so well that that's actually a thing that's possible. And this right here is why I like having as much throat space as this machine has. It's glorious because you can stick some things over here if you need to, but also all of your work fits in here. If you're quilting, this is great, but also if you're doing costuming, this is fantastic <laughs> because it means you can shove all your dress with your ruffles through here with no problem. The amount of throat space involved here is incredible. I have never seen a machine with more and I just absolutely love it. Okay, we're back at the ironing table for a quick trim and press. Okay, we're ready to do the second and then we flip and press one more time and then we're all good. Okay, we're gonna flip and press again. Okay, so you might see these little sticky outy bits. This is just because my material frayed during the process of sewing and that is actually completely normal. It happens all the time. So I just go through and clean these up and they just sort of disappear. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, I'm gonna do two processes to this guy. I am going to hem both sides and the bottom edge, but actually I don't have to hem this far side because it's on the selvage, which is fantastic. If you happen to find material that is exactly as wide as you want this apron, you can use both selvages, that's not an issue. I'm going to leave the top uh, open for right now, although I may zigzag it. So to do um, a small hem, I'm just going to literally double fold it and then stitch it and take care of that really quick. And then we're going to go ahead and pleat. Okay, for this one, I'm back to my normal regular plate and I have put on this G foot, which I believe is the blind hem foot. I am actually doing this in kind of a non-standard way. I'm just gonna use this to follow the hem and then I'm just gonna straight stitch it across because again, this hem's a little wonky. It was all eyeballed. No one's gonna see this and frankly, it's underwear, so I don't really care. I do want kind of a straight line happening here, so I do use this foot to follow it. So I have the G foot on here.
Okay, while I'm here, I'm just gonna go ahead and zigzag the top of this because I am over all this fring. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and pleat this down. So I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Okay, so we have this 35 inch top and we need to get it down to 20 inches. So I'm just gonna start adding pleats in here. They don't have to be in any particular place and they don't have to be nice at all. No one will see this. It's just to add a little fluff and get this down to 20 inches. I'm marking the center point here because I feel like that's probably good to make sure they're at least vaguely even, but that is the extent to which I am going to let this become fiddly. Okay, so we're down to around 20, it's a little bit under and that's totally fine, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna run a, a line of stitching across the top here so I don't lose these. I'm also gonna just press the very edge of it so I don't lose these pleats um, and then move on to getting the right amount of padding in. And that is a trial and error process. Okay, so the next part of this is going to be super easy and fun and all we're gonna do is add some tokus to my back end. <laughs> so I have this tape. It is, I think, five eighths inches wide. You could use inch, you could use whatever you have, whatever you want. I have made it long enough for me to tie around my waist and actually tie it. Uh, my waist is about a 40, so longer than that <laughs> by probably 20 inches, 30 inches, some amount of inches that let me tie it. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pin this down to the skirt and then also to the little bags but I'm only going to pin one part of the bags so that I can have room to stuff in the bags. So I'll show you that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and find the center point on this so that we know what we're working with here. Cool. Shall we mark that? We shall mark that. And we'll mark it with a pin, which we will immediately take out and put... Let's look at the center point of this guy. Which I'm just going to pin right to the same spot. And I'm going to pin this along here. And I'm not going to try to end with the pin in. You may be wondering why I didn't just sew this to this first. It's because I'm going to actually put them together in a different order when I'm done. You can do this in any order you want. The great thing about this project is you can do almost any of this stuff in any way you want. You can cut any corners you feel like. You can make this project your own. Okay, so I'm going to take my little, my little bum here, place it on this thing, and then I'm going to go ahead and... Leave a hole in the middle. It should look like two rumpuses. And I'm going to pin it, but only on the inside. And again, try to have the pin end in so that it's not catching the wool every time, or feathers, or whatever you're stuffing with every single time. Okay, I have my wool available to me, so I'm going to go ahead and grab some of it and just start stuffing. I'm going to try and not put too much in. I am adding 20 something inches, but that's going to happen pretty fast. This wool is washed and it is still grimy. And that's okay. You got feathers, stuff with feathers, do your worst. Uh, kind of like a normal rump, you want to like fill out the bottom a little bit more than the top, maybe. And then what I'm gonna do after this is just try it on and measure around my hips and see if I have gotten to. Sixty-six inches, and if I have great, and if I haven't, that's okay. You do kind of want to make these a little even if you can. 
That is one of the great things about wool. Just pull it and move it around and we're all good here. Okay, gonna brush off this dirt, put this on myself, and see if I'm 66 inches. Okay, this is butt cam for you. What a flattering angle I have on myself here. But it will give you the idea. And I can't actually set up a camera to show my whole body anyway in this room because it is too small. I will measure myself at this point. And I'm coming in at just over 55, so I'm about halfway there. So I'm going to add some more rumpus and see how we get. Okay, I'm fairly happy with these. I might add just a little bit more, but... Uh, these are pretty fluffy and they're about as closed, <laughs> about as full as you can get. I'm probably just going to stuff a little bit more in there. And then actually what I'm going to go do is take the tops, uh, pin them together and zigzag the top shut. And then I'm going to sew the whole shkaboodle together and then we will be done. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put this all together. I'm gonna make sure that the hem is to the back. So there's that. I'm gonna find the center point here, just so we know where that is and mark it. Okay, cool. The first thing I'm gonna do is just like attach the bags to the skirt because I feel like mm, it's sort of best if they're all treated as one unit. It has occurred to me that I probably want to run a seam line right here just so that I have something flat for this to stick to. So I'm just going to run off and do that for one second. Okay, so I checked this a couple times and it actually looks better when these pillows are pretty close to exactly in the center here and they kind of veer off on their own. So I'm going to go ahead and pin them there and then attach these two pieces together. That should be a very quick one stitch line that happens. And then we'll be ready to attach the band, and we'll be all done. Okay, so we got to this point, they're firmly attached. I checked this out in the mirror, this looks great. They do separate into a completely split bum, which is fantastic. Also, after trying that on several times, I realized I should probably go with a wider tape. It's just more comfortable. So what I'm actually going to do is go ahead and pin this... Uh, and fold it over just around uh, the skirt part and sew it on and then we will be ready to see the fruits of our labor. A poofy bum ready to go so exciting okay so i'm gonna go ahead and put this on and we're gonna check out what the uh, ramifications of what we did are okay we're gonna watch her go from this to this i'm very pleased with her new bum silhouette it's a split bum without being a too much split bum i think it looks great i think you definitely could make a larger or smaller one depending on your needs it's definitely pillows going off to the side and I think that's fantastic. I think she looks way better in this and I think I'm gonna look way better in this. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that you've had fun watching me make a new bum. Remember that if you would like to change the way you look in something, you don't always have to change your own body. You can sometimes just pad yourself out if you make a little tiny version of that without maybe the apron part. You could just slide those in your jeans, make yourself a little extra badunk dunk for those of you out there like me who don't have much junk in the trunk. I would like to thank Janome for this beautiful machine that I have been using for the last uh, just under a year now and I really like it. It's like driving a spaceship. It pretty much does everything. It's fantastic. 
I hope you guys are having a great day. Leave me comments down below and let me know what you're up to, what you're watching, what you're listening to, all that kind of jazz, and I will see you next time with another video. Bye guys!